There's some strange messages coming out of the Bitcoin conference in Miami that's going on right now. And one of the strangest things that's coming out of it is all about self-custody and why self-custody is something that maybe we should be looking over. And before we get started, you may notice that my voice is a little bit off. I am still sick, a little strep throat, but I have options. And the options are I could just lay around in bed and get nothing done or inform everybody what's going on in the crypto world. So let's go for the latter. So what I'm talking about today, there was this video, and this is Hotep Jesus, and uh, he is a, a proponent of crypto and digital assets, Bitcoin, and he is there at Bitcoin Miami Conference right now. And there's a little clip that uh, was being uh, sent around. I want you to listen to this clip, and we're going to get into the things that I think about it, how things can be misconstrued, and really it opens up a bigger can of worms. We'll get to all that in a second, so just take a listen. Some company is going to come along and they're going to offer some sort of insurance package. That's what I want. I don't want to be responsible for my keys. I want to say, here's my keys. You're responsible. And if something happens, then guess what? I'm coming after you, baby. Mm. I, you're going to be responsible for my wealth. That's going to be a key. And I, I'll pay 5% for that. I, I don't mind paying 5%. So interesting, right? And I will just preface it by saying this. I don't know what was being said before he made that comment i don't know what he said after it the next comment could have been hey just kidding that's what people are talking about and this is the reason why it's really important to self custody because of a b c and d but regardless even if we don't know those things there's a, a bigger question that comes up and it's going to make a lot of sense because what he just said is what a lot of people are going to be asking for because if you're here right now You've gone through the Celsius, the Voyager, and the FTX, and all the BlockFi, and all the issues that, that came along with that. So you understand the importance of self-custody. But the next group of people, the next ones that come along, they're not going to know those things. And we're going to talk about it. And we're going to tell them all about those things. And everything goes in cycles, right? So, you know, Bitcoin halving 2012, all-time high dip reset. Same thing happened in 2016, having all-time high dip reset. We just had another one, right? 2020, 2021, and I saw all-time high double tops and a dip and we're going through a reset right now but right here in 2024 and 2025 the people that are watching these videos the people that you're going to interact with they're not going to know the stuff about over here and they're not they're going to hear stories about it but it's not going to hit home like it did before how do i know this it's a video that we did a couple of days ago crypto lessons from the past 2014 and 2023 and what i talked about in there was Mt. Gox. When I got in 2017, everybody heard about Mt. Gox. Nobody really cared. And I go over all those things. As a matter of fact, these types of videos, I try to preserve them. So I put them over on Dan Teaches Crypto. And this video will also go in there as well. And this will be in Module 3 Investing. This one was right here. You can also find it on YouTube and make it very simple. My website, again, 100% free. So the question you have is, well, is this accurate? Is this true? And a lot of you, a lot of us right here are like, that's ridiculous. Why would we, why would he say that? Well, first of all, maybe it was a joke. Maybe there was something else going on. Maybe again, maybe I didn't hear him right. Or maybe later on he, you know, says, ah, I'm just kidding. Or, you know, it was this, this, and this. It was an example. But the thing that scares me is that the next group is not going to be aware of what's happening. And of course, when this happened, I need you guys to remember something. I need you guys to help me out because I can't be around forever. So when this happens and people say, why do I have a self cuss That's so stupid. Just remind me of this. I'll give you three reasons. Celsius, Voyager, and FTX. So <clears throat> if you don't want to self cussy that's fine. And, you know, maybe you can lock it away. And, and maybe this new organization uh, that is only doing self custody will be fantastic for you. And they will give you back all your funds. But just like how Celsius and Voyager FTX, they started out pretty good, but then they just became that industry or that company that needs a new revenue stream. They try to branch off in other things and they try to do uh, loans and they try to do yield and they try to do all the things that brought them down. And I think the same thing goes <clears throat> moving forward with people who are going to custody. Now, I think... What will happen is you're going to have people who will say, I'll self-custody. Me and you are going to do that. But the next group of people that come in, they're not going to want to do that. And they're going to pay for somebody else to do it. It's going to be a mistake. And just like 
the people that came before me in 2014 and 15, they said, not your keys, not your crypto. I learned the hard way. And I think sometimes that's the only way that you're able to learn. However, there is a, a couple of things that I, I will make mention of. And that is that, just as a reminder, I mean, uh, Sam Bankman, uh, he said, hey, uh, nothing's, there's no problems with FTX. It's fine. And this was on November 7th. And guess when they paused withdrawals? November 8th. And then, of course, we've got this little gem here. Shout out to uh, Crypto Hunter. This is about uh, 40 seconds or so. This is uh, Alex Mashinsky lying through his teeth as he was talking about how great the platform is. Just take a listen to this. The number one question from people is, are our funds safe at Celsius? Can you address that for the audience? Yes. So not just that they're safe. Again, we provided anyone who wanted to withdraw partially or fully. Um, they, there were, were no problems. I, I want any one of you, anyone who got wrecked on Celsius to say, sorry, I got wrecked on Celsius. Let's see if you have one guy, one person, right? Why? Because you can't take leverage. You cannot lose money, right? I mean, that's the whole point. So, so right, and, and Celsius takes full responsibility. So yeah, as hard as those are to, to look at and remember what happened, I think we all have to remember what happened so we can move forward. And then also before we go on, I will say, uh, don't jump on uh, James too much over Invest Answers. Uh, all, Alex Mashinsky also came on my program and lied right to my face too. So when we take a look at these things, just remember, <clears throat> it's not the people he's telling the lies to, it is the person that is actually lying. And then the next thing would be like, uh, we would talk about is, well, but this is a different case. This isn't a, an, an actual exchange. Uh, what they're talking about is just custody. And if that's all they're going to do, then it's going to be fine. Well, remember, uh, if you're going to do custody, it's going to be kind of like uh, being a bank, essentially like that. And can we can we trust everybody? Well, no, because there's a, uh, an example that just broke today. Australia's oldest bank bans payments to Binance and other crypto exchanges. And I find this hard to believe, but it's true. They said this is why they're doing it. Westpac, Australia's oldest bank, bans all payments to Binance and several other crypto exchanges. The bank said it is blocking a number of crypto exchanges as part of a trial to reduce scam losses. In justifying its position, the bank considered to be crypto friendly said it discovered that accounts tied to investments are predisposed to scams and that one third of all payment transactions made are sent directly to crypto exchanges. Digital exchanges have a legitimate role to play in the financial ecosystem, but since the rise of digital currency, we've noticed that scammers are increasingly using overseas exchanges. This is Westpac Group Executive of uh, Customer Services, Scott Colery. He says, often our customers only discover they've been scammed after the money has left the country, making recovery extremely difficult. And that's really what it comes down to. We're here to protect you. We're here to put your well-being first. How many times has an agency or an organization in power said that to us or to groups of people when in reality it was all just to serve their own purposes? I'm not going to go into certain examples. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. But again, when you have something who is uh, custodying your own assets, you're giving up power to somebody else. And that's the problem. I talked about this yesterday and we talked about ledger. I feel like people are getting weaker and weaker because in all honesty, everything that, that we have to do, we can do. We are not that weak and we are quite strong to be able to do this to self custody for Pete's sakes. It's not like we're going out and, and uh, fighting wars uh, on a daily basis. You're writing down a 24 word mnemonic phrase and try not to lose it. Uh, you can put it anywhere you want to. It's uh, it's, it's pretty, it could be easy to lose if you don't, uh, take the right steps, but it's also a lot easier to do uh, different other things to, to to slip up. So we all have the ability to do this, but for some reason, a lot of people think that they can't because these organizations have been put in power for so long and we get dependent on them when there's actually no reason to be dependent on them. So that's the one side of that. And the flip side, I thought this was quite interesting, was this. This was a little bit uh, unnerving, but I understand where she's coming from. Uh, Bitcoin custody services are coming to Custodia Bank, says CEO Caitlin Long. Caitlin Long is a huge Bitcoiner, and she has been uh, really adamant about self-custody. So when I saw this, I'm like, what the heck is going on uh, with the world and crypto? But this actually does make sense. She states, 
there are certain types of businesses like investment companies, registered investment advisors, corporate treasurers, and other types of fiduciary that have to, by law, segregate the custody of the assets from the management of the assets. She goes on to state, she explained why a hardcore Bitcoiner won a bank. She claims she doesn't think the world is ready for hyper Bitcoinization yet. I don't want the traditional financial system to melt down. I rather live in a world where the two financial systems are developing and have connectivity, but each one doesn't blow up the other. So in this one's a little bit different. She's talking about essentially organizations that by law cannot self-custody, but she doesn't really say too much about a individuals. However, I think when pushed, she might say that that is a could potentially be a viable option. And this just brought me to the point because when we hear these things, we sometimes we get triggered and we're like, no, it should be this way. It should be this way, this way. We have to do it this way. But then you got to kind of think in like a little bit open mind. And there was this, this great podcast it was uh, what Bitcoin did, Peter McCormick, and he had Michael Saylor on. It was really good. It's two hours. If you got nothing to do, I recommend you listen to it. Michael Saylor was a huge Bitcoin bull, and he says, look, he goes, there's these things called ordinals, and a lot of the Bitcoin maxes don't believe in that. He goes, I think it's not a bad idea. He goes, but there's going to be things that are going to happen with Bitcoin that you're not going to agree with. Everything's going to be built on top of Bitcoin, and you're going to think that it's the worst idea ever, but in reality, it actually could work out pretty well. And nothing is going to be perfect. But to me personally, this is just what I will do. I will continue to self-custody. But the people that don't want to self-custody and they want to pay something else, let them do it. And uh, they can learn that way. And lastly, I will just say this. On this channel, you know, I've talked a lot about regulation. And how I believe that we should have regulation. And it's not a very popular opinion in the crypto community. But I personally believe that we should have some kind of clarity and a lot of people do not like that. But I will uh, like to give a shout out to Representative Tom Emmer. He came out and said, I introduced the Securities Clarity Act with Rep. Darren Sato. This bill clarifies the regulatory classification of digital assets and provides market certainty for innovators and clears jurisdictional boundaries for regulators. And I got to say to him, bravo, because that is something we definitely need in this space. And maybe Gary Gensler can get the point and actually give us clarity to where we want to be maybe just with crypto exchanges. Well, that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. This is not a set it and forget it type of space. It moves very rapidly. If you're not gonna subscribe to me, subscribe to somebody. That's it for today. Thanks so much. I do appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.